Hi, welcome along to another video. All the links to the articles are in the information section of this video. Quite a lot to go through this week. We start in Malaysia, been reporting about how their cloud seeding operation is going to take place. They've been delayed. The eight cloud seeding operations planned for the water catchment areas of the Teluk Bahang Dam could not be carried out as scheduled. The reason stated by the private contractor is that it has not received the flares that are needed for cloud seeding operations. Over to the United Arab Emirates, new technology to transform UAE food and water security. This is in the Gulf today. Between 2008 and 2018, the UAE's water consumption rose by almost 26%. These numbers are simply not sustainable. Cloud seeding has produced impressive results, but it needs to be complemented by a capacity to sustainably harvest this additional precipitation. Mm, no, I think we'll just stick with that. It's not sustainable for you to live there. <laughs> And a reminder from the UAE from the beginning of the year, January 2020, UAE lashed by heavy rains and hails due to cloud seeding. Residents of the UAE woke up to heavy rainfall lashing parts of the country. Loud thundering and hailstorms were also experienced in some regions, all of these due to cloud seeding. Over to Holland, tinkering with the climate as a stopgap solution. To what extent can geoengineering techniques provide a stopgap solution to global warming. Two Dutch universities explore options up in the clouds and stratosphere and in the oceans. Herman Ruschenberg, Professor of Atmospheric Remote Sensing at TU Delft and Director of TU Delft Climate Institute in the Netherlands, prefers the term climate engineering. That is a bit more explicit. Geoengineering also involves, for example, underground tunnels. Climate engineering roughly boils down to developing techniques and methods to intervene in the climate system itself so that the earth cools down. So just to clear up any confusion there, they said geoengineering also involves, for example, underground tunnels. So what they're describing there is geotechnical engineering. Geoengineering is climate engineering climate engineering only. It is not underground tunnels, that's geotechnical engineering. And be aware, nowadays Google have geo-information engineering. And there's things like storing data on the web. It's called the cloud. You upload data to the cloud, that is called cloud seeding. So you see where this is going, right? You've got cloud seeding and you've got cloud seeding. You've got geoengineering, you've also got geotechnical engineering and geoinformation engineering. So I hope that clarifies for TU Delft exactly what the differences in geoengineering are because they've clearly got a misunderstanding going on there, haven't they? TU Delft is researching, among other things, how these aerosols can be put into the stratosphere. How do you get those dust particles to the upper atmosphere in a sustainable way? Conventional planes cannot go there. It's too high for that, and air resistance is too low to support them. Students at Technology University of Delft came up with the Stratospheric Aerosol Geoengineering Aircraft, SAGAS. These are airplanes that can carry 5 megatons of aerosols to altitude, altitudes ranging from 18.5 to 19.5 kilometres per year. For those of you that don't know what a saga is, a saga is an ongoing tale that goes on and on and on and on. The University of Southampton did research into the impact of geoengineering. And it scores moderately on safety. My personal stance is that we must... This is not my personal stance. This is the article. My personal stance is that we must do everything we can to reduce CO2 emissions. But we must also anticipate that we may fail. If so, then you need developments like solar radiation management in order to save some time. But you should never see this as the solution to the problem. My personal stance is, you shouldn't go anywhere near it. Over to Kensho Homestead, Geoengineering Resources, The Butterfly Effect. There's a bit of history for you that you can share on your social networking pages. Teller wrote and spoke about weather modification countless times. Edward Teller, known as the father of the hydrogen bomb. From May 2011, 
It's also for um, hi historical reasons then. Climate geoengineering, solar radiation management and its implications for intergenerational equ equity. This is from the Stanford Journal of Law, Science and Policy. As a result of the power of the present generation to unilaterally inflict enormous environmental harm on generations yet unborn, there is a clear need to address intergenerational relations within international environmental law. May 2011. A happy to help moment on Godlike Productions. Does anyone know where the UK harp and tenor grid is? Yep, I do. The New Musical Express, Lana Del Rey gives album update from video set of new single Chemtrails Over the Country Club. Sure you've all heard about Lana Del Rey's album? If you've been following these videos, you have definitely. Well done, Lana. Cloud Seeding Technologies. For anyone wishing to uh, look into modifying the weather over an area that's maybe occupied by a company that does weather modification. At Cloud Seeding Technologies, you, you can get aircraft mounted generators, aerosol generating, glaciogenic flare for cold cloud seeding. There you can see the generator on the wing of the plane. Deployment, below planes, above planes, uses, storms, rain, snow. In the UK is the Metro paper. And this will surprise probably a lot of people in the UK especially. There's an article written by in the first person by Caroline Lucas. For those of you that don't know, Caroline Lucas is the only Green MP in the House of Commons in London. There is too much crossing fingers and hoping for the best in our current approach. Counting on geoengineering solutions to pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, yet even the government's own advisers, the Committee on Climate Change, say many of these technologies are speculative with high costs. Sounds like Caroline's on side, doesn't it? We'll get into the Green Party in a minute, but just uh, to give you an, an idea of what Caroline has been like to deal with, many people, especially in, in her constituency, have approached her to do with this subject of geoengineering, and especially what we're seeing in the skies. Some people have approached her in a very rude and aggressive way. Other people have approached her in a very polite and non-aggressive non way. And the response is the same. She states she has never seen any evidence that there is any geoengineering taking place. So, obviously we just presume she hasn't been outside in the last 20 years. So not seen those big white lines going across the sky. Huh? And this is the argument that's always been put to her. It's like, just she hasn't seen any evidence of it, therefore she's not dealing with it. So anyway, Caroline Lucas, the Green Party, moving on. In 2009, okay, so this is 2020, Caroline Lucas has spoken in a London paper and mentioned geoengineering. She's refused to deal with the subject up to this point. And anyone can accuse me of lying about that, but I'm afraid you won't be able to because I'm not lying. She actively avoids the subject until now for some reason. But please note, let's have a quick uh, look there. Counting on geoengineering solutions to pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So what she's leading people to think about is carbon sequestration project. Absolutely not touching on the solar radiation management area at all. Not talking about the skies being sprayed out or anything like that. No, it's, it's about pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Carbon sequestration. So touching on the subject, but being vague. You know, it doesn't cut any weight, not in 2020. So, 2009, the Green Party opposes any attempts at planetary geoengineering. Okay? So the Green Party is against geoengineering, they just haven't seen any evidence of it happening. So if we look through the Green Party productions to find out exactly when they have spoken about geoengineering, we find out in 2009, they say they're against it. In 2011, in the Newcastle magazine, Carbon capture storage enthusiasts tend to see the Earth as a mere object that can be rejigged just to serve human wants. The same worldview drives those who advocate geoengineering. They have almost religious faith in the capacity to monitor, record and predict. So, 
no call to action, no mention of we need to investigate whether this is going on because the Science and Technology Committee are saying there are trials going on in 2010 so there's no mention it's just it's a world view about geoengineering and it's to be related to carbon capture and storage don't think about SRM so we go over to Norfolk Norwich the city councillor and the county councillor leaders of the Green Party groups on Norwich City Council and Norfolk County Council they wrote in 2015 so this is our third mention 2009 they're against it 2011 it's just something that exists 2015 with regard to a road that's being built Andrew Boswell and Richard Behrman of the Green Party wrote a letter to the people that are building a road saying this it is not the one scheme such as the NDR which is the road will tip the world into dangerous climate change but that the accumulative effect of many such infrastructure schemes being rolled out currently add up to a massive carbon abatement cost for the post-2035 generations. Both nationally and internationally, we foresee that by that date, our grandchildren's generation will not just be considering ultra-low carbon technologies for energy and transport, etc., to mitigate the debt of carbon emissions generated now and in future decades, they will also have to be seriously considering massive geoengineering projects costing trillions in projects akin to the Manhattan Project. So here you have it in 2015. They're talking about post-2035 and then geoengineering projects will be seriously considered. Absolutely no mention of what's going on. They're thinking about the next 25 years and they do not mention the last 25 years. 2018, Camden Green Party, Camden in London. There's a list of about 36 councillors available to vote for on this list. The last person on the list, right at the very end, right at the bottom of the list, Helena Paul is an environmental activist on issues such as geoengineering. Hmm, I wonder why Helena comes last on the list because she's the only one who mentions that, probably. Over to MF. Oh, this is a fun article for you now. One of these informative ones. 24 strange predictions for the 21st century. We'll go with number 6, we'll be able to make it rain. On January the 6th, 1910, Iowa's Cedar Rapids Evening Gazette published an article that predicted people would be able to make it rain within the next century which we actually can kind of do. Through a process called cloud seeding, silver iodide particles are injected into clouds and water collects around them to form precip precipitation. Its effectiveness is debated, however, and it's still a far cry where futurists thought we'd be by the 21st century. Well, actually, they was quite successful at it 40 years after that report and what's been going on in the last 60 years across over a hundred different countries I think um, it's effective okay. there is no debate there's a piece about hurricanes harp number eight we'll, we'd build machines to generate weather other fantasies so let's be just be clear about this it's a fantasy of controlling the weather okay just be sure it's a fantasy no reality about it whatsoever other fantasies of controlling the weather were even more vague and less scientifically sound and we'll just leave that bit there because it's just a ridiculous article someone talking about a subject that they know nothing about it's insulting it's really insulting NCAR sponsored by the National Science Foundation their com computational and information systems lab a new report out research finds sulfate geoengineering would be only a temporary fix for climate. Our research indicates that the ability to cool back down the planet using aerosols is limited and after a certain point the side effects start to be unavoidable. Thus it highlights that sulfate geoengineering would only be at best a temporary fix and at worst an extinction level event. Sorry that was my bit that I added on the extinction level event thing. 
If you're feeling rich for $50, you can buy this report from the Environmental Law Reporter. A rights-based approach to governance of climate geoengineering is a new report. Faced with gr the growing threat of climate vulnerability, many have turned to the idea of geoengineering. However, many environmentalists and human rights advocates are wary of the risks related to geoengineering. At present, there is no international agreement that governs the deployment of geoengineering technologies. OK, time to pay attention. In the Pagosa Springs, Sun. In the Public Notices section, this is for Colorado. So please, if you, um, if you have people in Colorado, make sure they get to hear about this. So. Notice of intent of a continuous program to modify weather. Notice is hereby given that Western Weather Consultants, hereinafter referred to as WWC, has filed with the Colorado Water Conservation Board an application for renewal of WWC's five-year permit to conduct a ground-based weather modification program within the state of Colorado in the San Juan Mountains. The primary target area for the five-year weather modification permit is defined as follows. The San Juan Mountains above 8,000 feet mean sea level. The, the program shall be continuous from November the 1st through April the 15th for each year for the next five years, expiring in 2025. The intended effect of the weather modification operations is to increase precipitation, snowpack, water content in the primary target area to benefit the natural habitat, agriculture, municipal water, stock growers, recreational and tourism interests, and the area economy. So basically, what they're saying is, is if they don't modify the weather, like it's game over, business, from a business perspective, like your natural habitat isn't going to benefit, agriculture's going to go wrong, there's going to be no municipal water, stock growers can't grow anything, Recreation and tourism is going to fail and the area's economy is going to collapse. Neuro-linguistic programming. We all know about that. So that was a roundup of some news. I hope you've recovered from the news about Caroline Lucas speaking out in the UK. As usual, thanks for watching. If you share, thanks for sharing. Thanks for the likes. As always, thanks for the dislikes. It's always good to know you people are out there. Look after each other, look after yourselves. Take care. See you next time.